Liz Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, April 19th. Okay, so first of all, welcome to the shift day. What do I mean by that? Well, the moon is going to be in Virgo energy. We just anchored into this Virgo energy here yesterday. And this is going to provide us with a grounding point, an anchor point for our emotions while the sun shifts out of Aries energy and moves into Taurus energy. We are officially kicking Taurus season off at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to that Taurus season astral forecast that I put out there and of course download your Taurus season e-guide. We are definitely going to feel this shift. It is going to probably feel like we hit some kind of brick wall to a certain extent because the pace is going to slow down. Now that being said, We are going to slow our rolls. We are going to become a little bit more present. We are going to take a more slow and steady pace towards our goals. However, we have a major event popping off here 24 hours into Taurus season taking place on the 20th between Jupiter and Uranus. And so there's an underlying, let's call it jitteriness, Um, There's an underlying pulse, if you will, that there is something that is going to change, that something major is on the way, that some kind of unexpected event is going to pop off, which is going to make the slower pace feel kind of weird. Our physical body is definitely going to slow down, but our inner realms definitely picking up. Even besides those particular points, we have Mercury and Venus coming into a conjunction, which of course is a reset. We have Mars popping off with both Jupiter and Uranus prior to Jupiter and Uranus's conjunction, which is also going to be a different kind of energy built up. And we are going to have some interesting dynamics to really give us a little bit of a clear reality check on what it is that we're doing, what it is that we're building, what it is that we're trying to pursue. So if you've listened to the Ascension forecast for this week, you would know that Wednesday and Friday are the busiest days of the week. And so here we are on Friday, major shift. We're moving into seasons. We have a lot of different energies popping off. This is going to be a wackadoodle day, meaning there are 16 different aspects taking place here today. Major, major day in the cosmos. 11 of those aspects are going to involve the moon. Side note about the moon, just a little bit of a reminder here. The moon in Virgo energy helps us to identify the problem, break it down into the smallest details possible, especially where our mental plane and emotions are concerned. We are dissecting the blockages, the challenges, the issues. The Virgo energy has the ability to fix, to heal, to repair said issues. But of course, we have to become aware of them before any kind of progress can be made. So the fact that that is an Earth energy ruled over by Mercury, and of course, Mercury is retrograde in Aries energy, and Taurus season, the sun, once shifting into Taurus energy, is a fixed Earth energy, we are definitely going to become more present, more aware of our physical body, of our physical circumstances. We're going to have a time to reevaluate, to break things down, to dissect them, to understand what it is that we could change, what we can alter, what we can transform transform on the smallest micro scale in order to start aligning with the greater grander goal and vision and dream. So definitely an interesting day on our hands. So with all of that being said, We kick the day off with the moon in Virgo energy, making a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself in this Aquarius energy. So this is a very interesting dynamic. And I'm sure if you've been with me for any amount of time, you would know that I am in favor of Virgo energy and Plutonian energy interacting together. Why is that, you may ask? Well, Pluto does a deep dive in the deepest parts of our psyche. This is us moving inward to examine the conditioning, the programming of our subconscious mind. The Virgo energy that again, ruled over by Mercury, examines the lower level intellect, 
our egoic intellectual plane that depends on our physical realm for proof, for evidence, for reason, to form thoughts, to form opinions. We have Pluto showing us the blockages, the challenges deeply seated in our psyche. That Virgo energy is going to be able to bring it into realization, to break it down, to dissect it, to figure out where it is that we learn said thoughts, learn said behavior. And then we have the ability to flip the script, to build ourselves up in a much better way, especially where positive, supporting, encouraging narratives are concerned. So first of all, this is a very intense dynamic. It is a positive interaction, which means that we are shifting our perspective. We're shifting our mental plane. We have different thoughts, different ideas, different opinions, because we're recognizing where it is that certain narratives, certain emotions are essentially blocking us from moving forward, blocking us from standing in our power, blocking us from making us feel like we're actually in control. We are in control. We just have this delusion to think that we're not in control. So where do we learn that said behavior? This is a realization that is going to pop off. This is an aha moment that is gonna pop off that will essentially shift our mood and our attitude in alignment with our heart and our head to understand where it is that we no longer abide by those limiting thoughts, those limiting behaviors. Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline in this Pisces energy, not only trying to wrap up the last 30-year cycle, but also trying to deconstruct the old realm of belief, the old perceptions, the old ways of doing things, the old vision, the old goal, the old dreams. We have Saturn making a very positive interaction with the North Node. And again, the North Node is an Aries energy, is trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential. This is a little bit of a reality check. It's not going to come in a harsh way, but we have an aha moment showing us where it is that guess what? In order to actually align with the vision, the goal, the dreams that we are currently percolating on and trying to build and cultivate within us, we're going to need to flip the script and actually become more disciplined. We need a better structure, starting with A, the way that we look at things, the way that we perceive the world around us, B, making sure that our emotions, our vibration and frequency are in alignment with the outcome in which we want to actually manifest, and C, out of that, we definitely need a better routine. We need more discipline. We need more willpower. We need a better internal narrative. We need a better vision and dream to keep us on the straight and arrow. So here's the thing. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, retrograde in this Aries energy, going to come up to bump into team up with Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's about to be handed the throne, so to speak, as the sun shifts into Taurus energy, but we're not there yet. Venus is still in Aries energy, giving us a little bit more of that warrior type of spirit to identify the change of heart, identify the change in worth in values, in priorities, in relationships, in money matters. We are declaring our emotions and our affections a little bit more straightforwardly than normal. We're not afraid to go after what it is that we want. Now, having these two come together, first of all, it's going to be a blast from the past. We're kind of looking back in a very nostalgic kind of way to old relationship dynamics to conversations that maybe didn't go so well. We are really picking apart, and again, backdrop the moon in Virgo, looking to dissect those particular, let's call them thoughts, ideas, memories, and images. We're looking to dissect them so that we can analyze our feelings in a totally different way. So this is a opportunity to a certain extent, to intellectualize what it is that we went through, what it is that we responded to, what it is that we experienced. We're reframing things. Now, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned, because again, side note, this eclipse season that we just went through, major impact on relationship dynamics. 
Venus, of course, is all about the heart space. Mercury is looking back at who it is that we were in particular situations. And because Venus is all about relationship dynamics, we're taking a good look at the evolution of who it is that we were through different stages of our lives, especially where relationships are concerned. Now, this is definitely, again, conjunctions are just as much about endings as they are beginnings. We are going to bring an ending, a closure, a completion point by reframing, seeing things from a different set of eyes, almost kind of giving ourselves a sense of closure. And in that, we can relieve that energy, release that energy from our being, from our thoughts, from our heart space. And now we're pivoting to figure out where it is that we want to go from here. Now, Mercury and Venus coming together can put us in a situation where we want to talk about our thoughts and our feelings, where we want to kind of reminisce, if you will. If you find yourself in that situation, by all means, get some things off your chest, but also understand that your message or information, your story isn't going to be as well received as you were hoping it would be. Mercury is still retrograde. And so there's a tendency where we're light and we're fluffy and we're friendly, but we're trying to talk about deep seated issues and meaningful conversations conversations and the translation there just doesn't happen. So if you're the one who's like spilling your heart space and, you know, being real and raw and authentic, and you're not kind of having the same kind of reception from the person in which you're trying to convey your thoughts to, you could feel a little bit isolated, a little bit, you know, out of connection, a little bit detached, if you will, creating a void that doesn't need to be there. Similarly, if you're on the receiving end, please make sure that you're giving enough attention to whoever it is that's spilling their guts to you to try to avoid creating a vo avoid a wound within them. Either way, there's a lot popping off in our inner realm and maybe even in conversation if you find yourself in that situation, but we are reframing who it is that we have been in the past, who it is that we currently are now and who it is that we need to be in order to resolve, to grow, to heal, to fix, to repair some relationship dynamics. So that is a banger of an energy. Now the moon in Virgo energy is going to come in, make a positive interaction first with the North node in Aries, then with Mercury retrograde in Aries. So the interesting dynamic here is first of all, the moon interacting with that North node, we are starting to put the pieces together on where it is that we do have options to grow, to heal, to fix, to repair certain issues in our physical realms. We're actually building an excitement in anticipation for what is to come. The moon interacting with Mercury. Of course, Mercury rules over the Virgo energy that the moon is in. This is our heart and our head. And for the first time in a long time, we're actually starting to get on the same page. We're starting to see some steps that we could take. We're starting to understand where it is that we could have done things differently in the past and now have an opportunity to right those wrongs here in this present moment to encourage growth and healing and repairment in our future. And so this is is all good vibes. We're starting to think about the future in, I'm going to say, in alignment and correlation with the past. So we're having this reflection back. We understand what happened. We understand what it is that we could have done differently. And now we have the opportunity to integrate that information, to implement that in our present moment to improve futuristic situations and scenarios. 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the sun shifts into Taurus energy. Again, please listen to the Astro Forecast. Please download your Taurus Season e-guide to help you kind of stay in alignment and stay ahead of the energies coming at us through this Taurus season. About 10 minutes later, we have the moon in Virgo energy making a positive interaction with Venus. Now, Venus just took her rulership. She just took the throne when the sun shifted into Taurus energy. So now she is empowered. The moon interacting with Venus in this way, and again, she's in Aries energy, so she's just looking to blaze a path forward. She wants to get things done here. She's feeling more confident, more optimistic than normal. This is going to put us in a situation where we're feeling a little bit more empowered to do the things that we need to do. And in this particular instance, I'm talking about 
cutting certain aspects, people, attachments out of our lives in order to clear the space, in order for us to build towards something new, something that our heart is asking us to do, asking us to pursue, but we've been kind of procrastinating on it because it means that to a certain extent, we're going to have to cut off, release, close the door, bring a certain chapter to completion. We have new wants, new needs, new desires to actually pursue, but there are some blockages in our current circumstances preventing us from starting fresh. 11.29 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger, sextiling, beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Taurus energy. So first of all, here's a here's just a little bit of a buildup. Jupiter and Uranus are popping off here tomorrow, Saturday, April 20th, for the first time in 14 years. This is a major astrology event. I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to the 2024 year ahead reading that I put out at the beginning of the year for this particular month. This is a major shift. This is a major expansion, major leap forward. So having Mars kind of, you know, greet, meet and greet Jupiter first, and then Uranus will come later. We'll talk about that in just a second. This is kind of like building the hype if you will. This is putting us in a situation where we're looking forward. We're not really looking back, which is a lovely thing considering the fact that Mars is in Pisces energy and we do have a tendency to look back in that Pisces energy. But also Mars in this Pisces energy has been getting an alignment with a new truth, new passion, new project, new calling, new purpose. This is where we are starting to kind of get in alignment with our higher selves. So Mars has ants in his pants. He's ready to go. He will be busting into his rulership on the very last day of April. But until then, we're gaining momentum. We're gaining inspiration. We're gaining creative life force energy. So Mars kind of interacting with Jupiter in this way. Jupiter is the hype girl, if you will, of the Zodiac. Things are optimistic. Things are confident. We can dream a bigger dream. We actually believe that we can achieve it. This is definitely stirring the pot, trying to get our motivation, our enthusiasm up to a peak point precipice of energy. We are motivated, we're inspired, we're rearing to go. We are definitely tapping into a new life force energy where we don't care the blockages, the challenges that we're gonna run into. We just want that green light go ahead so that we can get the party started and actually start pursuing new happiness, new dreams, new goals, new visions. So the moon in Virgo energy then goes ahead and makes a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. This is us going through this identity crisis. I prefer to call it a rebranding because we're definitely evolving and growing and kind of reaching that 2.0 version of ourselves. The moon interacting with Chiron at this point is definitely a shift in our perception of self. We are seeing this new version of self. We're seeing a new mood and attitude. We're seeing a new goal, new vision, new dream, albeit maybe very small little bouts of clarity, but we are seeing the growth. We're seeing the healing. We're seeing the repairment that we have done within ourselves. And therefore, we are starting to kind of be accustomed to this new version of self. It's a beautiful thing. There's growth, there's healing, there's repairment, especially where we are seeing ourselves are concerned. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with the sun. So the sun, of course, just shifted into this Taurus energy. This is the first aspect that the sun is going to be involved in. And anytime that we have the moon and the sun coming together in any kind of interaction, it's going to reveal an aha moment, especially where our emotions are concerned, where wants, needs, and desires are concerned. The moon is in Virgo energy, a mutable earth sign. The sun is in Taurus energy energy, a fixed earth sign. So this is earth on earth action and earth kind of brings us back into form. It makes us very present in our physical bodies. It makes us very aware of our physical circumstances. We're taking a good look around at our physical realm. This is time to reevaluate where it is that we're at, especially coming out of the wackadoodle eclipse energies. And so the moon in Virgo is focused on the smaller details. What do we have power and control over? What do we have the ability to fix? What do we have the ability to change, to transform? That's going to help stabilize our physical realm. Again, Taurus energy is here to stabilize out of the chaos that we just came from. So there is going to be an 
aha moment in examining our current situations and circumstances. We are going to be able to break down some of the problematic areas, some of the crazy, chaotic parts of life. And we're going to have an aha moment on what it is that we need to do to kind of, you know, cool that off, calm that down, stabilize that particular energy. Now, the moon in Virgo is going to directly oppose, sit across from Saturn, who, of course, is in Pisces energy. Virgo energy, Pisces energy, they sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. They represent the axis of healing. Virgo energy heals the physical realm and the mental plane. The Pisces energy kind of heals the emotional realm and the spiritual plane. Because Saturn is a little bit of a negative Nancy, a little bit of a Debbie Downer, there is going to be some tension here. Why? Well, because the tension is that we feel like we have a very long list of things to do. We feel like we have, I'm going to say, a lot of pressure weighing on our shoulders, roles and responsibilities, if you will. We are also feeling the tug of war. We are shifting into a new energy. Again, the time is going to slow down. The energy is going to slow down a little bit, but our inner realms are and to go. So this tension point, this conflict point is kind of putting a lot of pressure on us emotionally to continue to honor our obligations and commitments and the roles and responsibilities that we've been in alignment with. However, we're also anxiously awaiting the opportunity to start something new, to start something fresh. So there's definitely that push and pull, that teeter totter in energies where we're feeling emotionally like we want to jump into something new, but also like we shouldn't jump into something new right now. We have to clean up the mess of the past first. The moon then goes ahead, makes a very tough interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. And this is no surprise because, of course, coming out of that, you know, friction, that tension with Saturn, uh, the North Node is trying to get us on the right path. And right now we can't think about the future as much as we would like. Saturn just kind of gave us a harsh reality check and he said, listen, you want to get the party started? You want a clean slate? You want to start building something new? That's great. Why don't you attack your to-do list and clean up the aspects of the past in order for you to have a space to actually build something new? So here we are, again, trying to think about the future. We're kind of being blocked in that. And of course, that doesn't feel good. And now we are kind of focused on the problematic areas, the issues, the sectors of our lives that we've been procrastinating on that we really don't want to deal with that we know we have to deal with in order to jump into a new path, a new chapter. We don't sit in that tension, in that conflict, in that funkiness for too long. We have Mars, again, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, and this Pisces energy, sextiling Uranus. So Uranus, of course, and Jupiter, they're going to be the stars of the show here on Saturday. And so we had this interaction with Mars and Jupiter earlier. Now it's Uranus's time. Uranus is the great awakener. He likes to shock us. He likes to disrupt us. He likes to open up our mind to doing things differently in order to create a different result. Mars interacting with Uranus right now, this is going to send a lightning bolt of energy through our central nervous systems. We have energy building. Why? Because we're cultivating new inspiration, new motivation, new determination in order to see the blockages, the challenges of trying to initiate something new through. And so we're getting this jolt. This is building in restlessness, building in anxiety, building in inspiration, motivation, determination to actually get in alignment with the new path, the new plans, the new perspectives, the new ways of doing things. We're trying to build this excitement energy in realizing that change is just around the corner. The moon then makes an awkward interaction with Pluto. So we started the day off with the moon making a positive interaction with Pluto. Not to say that this is, isn't a positive one. It's just a different type of vibe, different type of energy. So here we are. We're building in this energy. We're trying to get excited. We're trying to be motivated. And then all of a sudden we take a step back and we realize that the fear the doubt, the insecurity is now kicking in. This is typically how it goes. Just when our higher self, you know, kicks our butt, so to speak, and gets us in a good vibe, good perspective, where we're ready to grow, we're ready to take action, we're ready to evolve, the dark force agenda of our egoic programming kicks in, 
and starts kind of speaking fears into our dreams. We start kind of breaking it down on where it is that we are hesitating or we are resisting, really understanding what needs to be done and what we need to boss up into in order to make this dramatic shift, this dramatic change and transformation in our physical realms. So of course, the good thing is, is that we're going to be very aware of what is going on in our mental plane, what is going on in our emotions that is stemming from the past, that is stemming from fears and doubts and insecurities. And again, we're able to identify the problem, the issue, and we're able to nip it in the bud. We're able to flip the script, actually make it something better that can work for us instead of, again, our egoic programming working against us. The last things that we got going on here today, very interesting dynamic again, the moon in Virgo going to make a tough interaction with Mercury. Mercury rules over the Virgo energy. Mercury is retrograde in this Aries energy and a tough interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money also in this Aries energy. So right now, our heart and our head are not on the same page. Why? Because we just had a realization where our egoic programming is creeping in, trying to instill fears, doubts, and insecurities in the dreams and the goals and the visions that we just identified that we had earlier on in the day. And so what this is going to do is it's going to make us look back. Okay, so where did this stem from? Where did the seed get planted? Where do these fears and these doubts and insecurities actually come from? Who spoke these fears, doubts and insecurities into my mental plane at a young age? Why have I been carrying them around into my adulthood? Why do I allow them to self sabotage me anytime I get a chance to actually break free from the old realm and reality and try something new where growth and evolvement is concerned. The why questions, again, Virgo energy, Mercury, why, what, how, where, where are we coming from? Where are we going? What are we doing? How did we get here? All of these questions need to be asked in order to break it down and dissect where a lot of these not so nice narratives are coming from. And then equally, the moon kind of interacts with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Aries energy. And then suddenly we're not feeling as bold and brave and courageous and optimistic and confident as we did earlier in the day to do what we have to do in order to cut certain things, certain people people off of our lives in order to create that space for us to start building something new in the place of the things that are no longer supporting and encouraging our growth, our evolution, especially where relationships are concerned. <laughs>